two things. We gotta warm you up. And um, we have to keep you entertained until Calvary rolls in, which is Richard Spade Jr. <laughs> and tomorrow, it's Richard Spade Jr. and Mr. Rob Benjamin. And then Sunday, it's Richard Spade Jr., Rob Benedict, Jensen Apples, and Jeff Kahn. That. And I, I would just like to say congratulations to all of you on having survived the time warp. <laughs> because we have all stepped back in time. It is 2019. <laughs> or maybe 2020, I'm not really sure. You have bought tickets for the show in San Francisco. And the show's still on here. Season 14 is probably going to go for another 12 to 15 years at least. And we are here to entertain and to enjoy this show that's still on the air. And we're all four years younger. We're all four years younger. We can sleep better. I know I feel we're going to kick that off with our first guest of the weekend. The band, the myth, the legend, the one, the only. Please give it up for Mr. Tim part of a case study at um, <laughs> Tom's Hopkins called um, Handsome, Suave, and Charming After a Stroke. <laughs> I'm not the only one. There's one other guy in there. Some dude named Rob Bendy. Except he's from the subtype, right? So he's got the word sexy in there, too. Charming, handsome, sexy, suave, and devoted. He's Rob Bendy. And it's special thanks by Tim Hopkins. But he just takes up six points. Hey, gang! God, it's so good to finally see you after all these years. How about this band? I uh, this one's working, right? Hey, how about this band? Did I say hi? I think I said hi. <laughs> <laughs> Is it just me or you all gotten better than this last time I saw you? It's 2019. <laughs> oh, that's right. 
I, I can't do the math, math but it's a delight to see all of you. I gotta say, um, we do like a supernatural convention, specifically a creation convention in San Francisco. It's a pretty special thing to me because it's 20, it makes 25 years ago that I started doing creation conventions. Wow. Wow. Specifically in San Francisco. Wow. Of course, back then it was a little show called Xena. I know. Yeah. Yeah. So 25 years ago, I was doing a script, my journey on these, this crazy world called fan conventions. <laughs> so uh, I want to thank y'all for joining me for my uh, quarter of a century anniversary. Congratulations <laughs> for sticking with me after that thing that happened to my brain and the rest of me. It was in all the papers. I'm sure you heard that. But um, that was definitely specifically an encouragement waiting for me to go on. Get back into shape too. Try to get walking on the stage and see y'all. And, and the, uh, the uh, love I've gotten from this fandom specifically has really helped put the wind in my sails my recovery. So I am beyond grateful for all of your, your love and thoughts and prayers. And, and this one. so much and been such an inspiration to me and really fueled my recovery. So thank you for that. And Stephanie specifically for being, I know she's in the room somewhere. Here. Stephanie, are you Hi in here? <laughs> there she is, over in the corner. So Stephanie, in addition to uh, bringing me back on the show, has, in the, on the circuit, has made sure to um, take care of everyone in my I mean, it's, it's, it's been a hard world to get back to. It's been a hard slog to get back to school where I can walk out on stage. And she's made sure that I'm really taking care of you. Always taking incredible care of me, making sure I get a sound check apart so I can hear everybody in a proper chair that I can sit in. A bottle of vodka or... <laughs> it's a vodka gin. You said you're surprised me. So, Stephanie, again, I really want to thank you for all you've done to get me back on the circuit. And then make it so uh, accommodating. I love you too. So it's... Thank you, Seven. Let's see. Anybody, um, are there questions? Oh, Hi, I can see you over here now. Hi. Um, okay, so Supernatural and Psych are pretty much my two biggest comfort shows. So, uh, and being probably the biggest link between the two of those, I think they're pretty freaking cool. Uh, so I've always loved the idea of there being a crossover the, between the two shows where uh, Sam and Dean are looking for a psychic and they find Sean instead. <laughs> my question is, do you think the sight characters and specific the Lasseter would survive the supernatural? <laughs> well, it depends on how what kind of weapon Lasseter has. <laughs> I think if Lasseter had a chainsaw, I might do okay. <laughs> the rest of the gang, yeah, I think they'd fit right in. But, um, yeah, I think really for Lasseter, he would, um, he would appreciate the, um, Machinous of the boys. <laughs> and they're um, being so hell bent on justice and um, making the world more right. Right or <laughs> And then, um, yes. So I got really excited when I took. Plus, the stages were sometimes close. Um, 
That's where we're around town shooting sight. We would see some, we get to run into some of our, um, our amazing s crew on the Supernatural show. So it was great my first episode back, my, not back, my first episode ever getting to see some of my uh, crew members. And Sykes was similar to Supernatural on that. It was such, they were both such wonderful places to work, the crew never left. Because they just knew what a great gig it was. And what an incredible family. So uh, I was very lucky to get to be part of that and then have a little crossover with some of with Clayton and Rosie and some of the other gang. Except for 
when he's thrown through the window. <laughs> because someone smarter was smart enough to go, wait, we should probably maybe put someone who's not so handsome in there. <laughs> you can't mess up that place. <laughs> so him standing on like this this um, jetpack of a of a thing that launched him through the window was um the spoiler, not the real Jensen Ackles. Because, <laughs> come on, we can't take a risk of messing that, that face up. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you for being here. I really appreciate it. I wanted to know what your most memorable uh, time on set on Supernatural was. The most memorable time on set, other than what I just said with um. Those two would take the cake. Yeah. But prior to that would be um, the very top of the Executioner song, where, I'm, where Kane's walking down the set block, rattling the, uh, the locks in the cage, just kind of like all the time in the badass. <laughs> and then I suddenly hear, playing on, in the background of the stage, I hear um, one of King Richard's songs from Galavan. <laughs> As I'm walking around, like, just, again, just trying to be as tough as I can, just, and it's all in shadow, and something here is, I'd like to shoot him with a crossbow. <laughs> <laughs> Which actually is very Kane-like lyrics. <laughs> it's very sort of like, built in, like, not exactly Kane background music. He's a little more bad at all sort of stuff. But, um, just finally trying to, like, hold it together and not start buzzing out laughing. Luckily, I think it was all in shadow, so I think I was just on my back. But, but of course, Phil, would, our director Phil was the son of a bitch who pranked me. <laughs> God love him. And Dover? Hi, Lassie. Hello, hello. Uh, big fan, big fan since Love of the Irish. Love you inside. Love you. This is us. So basically, everything I've ever done. <laughs> so, my question is actually about Gallagher. Um, huge fan of that as well. I wanted to know um, what was your favorite scene to shoot and what was your favorite song to sing? Okay, favorite scene to shoot was. Y'all see Galvan? Yeah. Uh, what the hell is wrong? <laughs> it's the greatest hunting episodes of any show in history. Of the <laughs> so, favorite scene would be. Um, there's a moment where I am. Where Richard's on his way to save a burger, keep a burger from getting on the ship. And I'm galloping before this, I was on this freezing, this massive freezing stallion. And I'm galloping this thing through the English forest. There was a moment where, and actually the fact that they, um, they let me do my own riding. Cool. Because for years prior, I'd, I'd been taking horse riding lessons at, um, at this white at a, um, let's go White Stallion Ranch in Tucson, Arizona. Anybody from Arizona? So I've done a lot of running fire, which it turns out was all sort of little bit I know was in prep for the show Galena. So I get to I get to set on it that day and there's this they have a stunt right there. The stunt team, the riders were like, it is the rider the stunt guy does we do Tim Tim can ride this horse. Which would be super proud. <laughs> so I'm galloping this horse through the um, the English forest. There's a moment, see so I go from point A to point B. And then I would walk the horse back to um, start restart the scene. This moment, like the, the wind just sort of gusted through, and um, this horse, the leaves just started raining down. It was one of the most beautiful moments I've ever experienced. And I literally just like sat back on this horse and kind of spread my arms, just let my long flying hair shake out, and <laughs> the leaves kind of just roll down. It was just, just it was really one of those moments in my life where I just stopped and went, just. Take this in because this is never happening. You are on a horse in England playing a king in this magical forest, and it's just. I mean, it, it really it makes me emotional to think about it. Just, I can still picture those leaves falling around me. It just it was just an intense moment of beauty and peace and quiet. I got a couple pictures from that day. Unfortunately, none of the um, the leaves are falling in the picture, but. Because I'm not dumb enough to try and take a picture on it while I'm counting. So that was my favorite dance set. And my favorite song was, it had to be Good Night, My Friend. Which is.
is this, this beautiful lullaby that Bridget sings to the uh, in Epis Big Castle. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you, Jeff. Thank you. Unfortunately, my wish lady is uh, probably cheeseburgers and pizza. <laughs> and then I wonder why I'm kind of my closing. Thank you! Hello. Hello. Hi. I just want to tell you that I think you're like super talented and like, super yummy and. <laughs> Part. How did they do the Mark McCain, and uh, did you have to train for the fight scene? Uh, Mark McCain was. We well, at first it was um, a um, sort of breaking one's heart, a fake tattoo that our amazing makeup department did, <laughs> and then I remember there was a lot of um, scanning of my arm to get the um, the CGI effect when it um, shoots up my arm. In addition to the real branding they did. <laughs> because that's the kind of actor I am. I was so excited to be in the show, I was like, sure, maybe this will come back to haunt me, but you can brand my arm. <laughs> really, really, really hurt. Don't ever do it. <laughs> and then what's the follow up? Oh, did you have to train for the fight scene? Oh, fight scene, yes. We did three days, like, as I said earlier. Three days with Jensen and uh, the sound stage trying to. Um, or not how to get hit in the face for the work. Thank you so much. I'm so glad you're feeling better. Thank you so much. Thank you. Be a little bit every day. Hi, Tim. Hello, hello. Hi, Tim. Uh, big fan. My name is Grace. Thank you so much for being here with us. Um, Supernatural Psych and This Is Us are three of my favorite shows. Love your work. Uh, my question is, any any news on Psych the Movie 4? Psych the Movie 4, which by the way, today is the 17th anniversary of the premiere of the great shows. in 17 years in our 120 episodes and three hopefully four movies. So to answer your question about number four, four has, the script for four has been, from what James told me, it's been turned in. We were just waiting for the network to give us the, the green light. So we all want to turn so the media can tag um, at Psych Peacock, just saying we demand Psych 4 the movie. <laughs> but um, we need all of us are chomping at the bit to get back on set and call back on these characters. <laughs> so, um, I'm hoping that I don't have to say one second, but I know we're, we're, we're all trying to make it happen. We're just waiting for the, for the green light from the um, powers that be. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. That goes for all of you. Yeah. Woo! 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 Hello, hello. So I remember you playing Eli and Dina, and then I happened to be watching Criminal Minds the other day, and you played the serial killer. So what made you want to take that role as a serial killer? Like, who is this book project? Why did they think? <laughs> well, I think the number one part is the fact that you wouldn't pay me. <laughs> I have to put on my family's table. You the crazy thing about that, that episode of, um, Minds. I had just finished judging Amy where I was playing this really sweet um, social work with sort of floppy hair and, um, and I got done with that role and decided I wanted to mix things up so I, I bust my hair at the time. And I'd said, I've been in my acting class for a while and worked with this great teacher and she said, like, what, what kind of roles do you want to start doing? Because let's start preparing for, let's start doing those scenes in class so when the time comes you're ready for it. 
And I said her, after the, being the social worker, the sweet social worker for so long, I said, I want to be the guy with the gun. <laughs> so then lo and behold, as just fate or province has it, one of my first auditions after buzzing my hair was for this, this crazy young ex-marine long murderer. I thought that's a nice thing, but um, so and my age didn't know I did buzz my hair. So I showed up looking like, you know, like ex-military. And, and began, that began the role of, like, after that I just went into last year. So I suddenly started playing guys with college for the next several years. Which is funny how life works out where you, um, when you sort of tee up what you want. But honestly, to answer the question, the fact that someone's going to give me a job in Ironman, because it was still pretty early in my career, and I was just grateful that I was still just really struggling to, to put three jobs together in a row. <laughs> Sorry, what? Hi. <laughs> I can't see the from the girls making the man. Hi, uh, who's that? Hi, I, I, I'm Tara. How are you? Take a <laughs> breath. You okay? Yeah. <laughs> I forgot how to speak English. <laughs> you have a lovely voice. Oh, you can make it out. It's my second convention, and my first with you. So I'm going to let you can make it out. Um. Sir, you got to use the microphone a little more. Because otherwise... <laughs> That's how I always sound. <laughs> um, I'm really glad you can make it out. It's my second convention, and my first one with you. Here. Uh, so I'm going to let you and my question is, if you could have uh, any redemption arc in Supernatural, uh, what would you like it to be? If I could have any what Supernatural? Redemption arc in Supernatural, what would you like it to be? Redemption arc? Redemption arc. Um, well, first of all, congratulations on your first convention with me. <laughs> <laughs> and your second convention in general. Welcome, congratulations, we're glad you're back. I'm still not totally clear on the question. Oh look, there's a light now. I can see. I'm still not entirely, can you repeat the question one more time? I'm so sorry. If Kane could have uh, any redemption arc, uh, what redemption arc would you like it to be? Boy, that's a tough one. I don't really think of the words Cain and Redemption together, but um, <laughs> you got me thinking on my feet now. <laughs> Which is hard for some of the Lakers. If Cain could have a Redemption art, I'd always thought it would be fun to see Cain in hell hanging out with Rowena. <laughs> But I think yeah, Cain, because he's not going to, I mean, if he's going anywhere, he's going to hell. <laughs> so it would be Cain and Rowena hanging out in hell. Yeah. Thank you, and again, thank you for coming to see me. <laughs> Look forward to seeing you at your next, your third convention and second verse for me. <laughs> Hello. Hi, Tim. Um, my question is, uh, you talked about how Bill pranked you, and we all know the boys are famous for their pranks. Did they prank you at all? Um, the boys didn't prank me, but it was it was Phil pranking me with that song during my opening shot of um, of Kane walking out the um, <laughs> the cell block. Do you think it was because they were afraid of you? <laughs> so, do you think it was because they were afraid of you? No, I think it's just because they like to take a piss when they can. <laughs> I feel like I really got off lightly on that one. <laughs> Compared to some of the stories, pranking stories I've heard. Thank Hi, you. good morning. Uh, my name is Sammy, and I, this is my first Supernatural Convention, and I'm a huge fan of yours. Uh, <laughs> you're a by my 
absolute favorite villain in the entire series. I love the plot line, and you did an amazing job. My question is, though, in the scene where Dean, it's you, Dean, and Crowley in the room, and Dean, uh, sorry, Crowley does the, the cross. My question for that is, did you end up having any bloopers? for that, like, did you burst out into laughter when he did that? Um, first of all, welcome to your very first Supernatural convention. <laughs> uh, no, there were no bloopers in that scene, I don't think. Um, it's funny, because Mark and I had known each other for 30 years prior to that scene. Oh, like, it was just, it was super fun getting on set and then having an old friend there. Thank you so much, I appreciate it. Thank you, welcome again. I hope you have a great really wonderful weekend. Yeah. It's so amazing to see to meet people who are here for the very first time. This amazing connection has been going for so long. I love that it's still just fun. So thank you for coming out. Hello. Hi Tim. I just want to say it's a pleasure to meet you. I didn't think I could see you on the convention circuit ever, so I'm very excited to be here. Thank you. Uh, well, I'm very glad they don't be seen on this one. <laughs> <laughs> uh, a little touch and go for a while. <laughs> my question's about the, the Hillywood show parody about Brock portraying you portraying the game. <laughs> I had no idea, but damn, he was good. <laughs> Just so handsome. So good. <laughs> Vero and sexy. <laughs> Of course, that's just in general, but then we throw that beard on it. <laughs> yeah, I don't know how anyone could resist it. <laughs> that was so ridiculous. Fun. I just, I'm so glad there's documentation of that, me and that purple suit. Because <laughs> unfortunately, I don't fit into that one anymore. Thank you very much. Thank you. Hi. So, I'm with my... My husband and my best friend, this is our first time this year actually coming. And we're big sci-fi Supernatural fans, but we're also really big Percy Jackson fans. So when we found out, so we found out that you were her bestest, I wanted to know what was your reaction when you found out that you were going to play them? Um, intense gratitude. Aww. Again, that's another one where all roads with me and Supernatural stand from Richard Space. I don't know if you know this, but Rich and I have been friends since college. And Rich was the one who really got me involved with, um, well, it would just be Robbie and Robbie Thompson, who, of course, you know, our, our dear writer Robbie, who I think originally created, created Kane. And uh, Rich also got me on a show called, uh, helped get me on a show called Jericho. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Which, um, the executive producers of that, Danny Schatz and John Steinberg, Our co that our executive producer was on the Percy Jackson show. And there's a great show called The Man with uh, the amazing Jeff Bridges that they credit. That's out right now. And so I, I text um, the boys, those two guys, when uh, The Man came out, just saying how wonderful it was. And they said, uh, they texted me saying, hey, you want to come, want to come do this new show, Percy? You know, I was just flabbergasted. Because here's the thing about these, these two gentlemen, Danny and John. Where are you, Tom? They're so incredibly supportive and um, open about their casting. And so I said to them, like, you know, guys, I'm not the same actor you knew all these years back. Just obviously I've got... B2. It's B20. a whole different physical yep. game. Cognit cognitively, it's, it's all fun. And, and uh, we're still struggling with coming back from the acting after um, the thing that happened in our brain. Going through a bit of an excellent process of trying to figure out how to do it still. And he sent this text back saying, we want you however we get you. Yeah. Just say, don't want to say it. I'm so lucky to back home support that. From the creators of Psych who brought last year back in, again, whatever form I physically showed up with. And then to have, um, so I show up on set for a suggestion, which by the way, is gonna blow you away. <laughs> If you're a fan of that series, I'm so excited for everyone to see the show because it's it was unlike any television set I've ever been on. So I, my first day I go to I, I have to with, with Danny and I say, here's the thing I'm I'm really worried about. Um, and I, I was worried physically because I've, I've got a bit of a um, visual impairment on my left side now. I've got a blind spot. So 
he was just like walking on sets physical, always going to be using the stick. So he had the, um, he had the production crew um, send me pictures of the platform I was going to be standing on, just so I could have an idea of where I was going to be. And I was at the top of the sound, um, not to give it away, but at the very, very top of the, of the sound stage. And he had a scissor lift built, because I couldn't get up the stairs to get all the way up there. So he literally had the construction crew send me pictures saying, do you want to ramp up more stairs? And are these okay? Like I said, that kind of support physically for um, accessibility was incredible. But I, so I showed up and said, you know, one of the things I'm really worried about is my voice, because I'm still, like it's a lot of, it's as um, Richard Spade used to call me in theater school, he, he would call me Ilko Jet. So I had sort of this big, booming, deep baritone, deaf, classically trained voice, which really kind of went away after the stroke. So I'm still trying to um, get my breath back and lower my voice. And so I said, I'm really worried about um, this scene, because it, there was a, a, quite a bit of distance between me and the other actors, the way the scene was set up. You'll see when you watch the show. <laughs> so he had this great idea. They're, because the, the two leads of the show are um, teenagers, they have an acting coach on set to kind of help them along the way, because they're not that experienced. And so he said, oh, you know, we have this amazing acting coach on set. Why don't I send him to your trailer and give you a vocal warm every day? So sure enough, every morning, this wonderful acting coach and would show up my set, show up my trailer, and it would give me this wonderful vocal work to really kind of ground me. That's cool. Which um, was just an incredible gift to kind of restore my confidence. And then that acting set, that acting coach was actually on set with me. So I had Dan to go talk to between every take. I'd go out and talk to Dan. We'd sort of talk about the scene. And, and he would just reassure me that the greatest gift you can give an actor is time on set. And he assured me, he's like, we are not going to move forward and say, we say, you know, cut until we have the exact performance we want. So it was just, it was that kind of a gift of giving me confidence and reassurance and holding me up and putting the wind in my sails and just support that um, I wish all actors with disabilities had. Not even actors, just everyone with disabilities has in, in, their, in their lives and workplace. So I was just, it was a gift that I cannot emphasize enough on how fortunate I am to have friends like that to hold me up as I work. Much like Steph, as, as I was saying earlier, all y'all coming up to see me and take care of me and supporting me endlessly, and I feel the love every time I'm on set, every time I walk in on stage, or in a meet and greet or in the autograph, or photo. Every time I interact with any of you, I really feel the love, and I just want you to know how much I appreciate it. Um, and I'm actually a little disappointed 
you to get show up in your all fringe outfit that I saw on your Instagram. So my wish outfit is all fringe. I was super excited, and we're gonna be twins, and you didn't you didn't show up. Oh, <laughs> um, <laughs> sure, they wouldn't let me take on the claim. Just, they just said, no, that's too sexy. And can't. <laughs> but my question is, um, do you consider a hot dog a sandwich? <laughs> Boy, for the first time, you're really pulling out the tough question. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest, I've never <laughs> pondered that, that question. Is a hot dog a sandwich? No. No. Uh, no. Uh, yeah, I'm just the evidence of some item between two pieces of bread. I'm gonna have to say yes. Yeah. 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 question is, um, what was your favorite part about being in the love of the Um, again, getting hired to do a job. <laughs> no, honestly, though, I think the favorite part of Love of the Irish is the trip I took after Love of the Irish. I drove, we shot that in Salt Lake City, so I drove out there and my wife, uh, my daughter, my wife, Allison, who I don't know if she's in the room. Ooh. She always gets mad when I call her out. <laughs> so uh, if she's here, hi, Allison. Uh, I'm going to say she's going to be like, me later for calling her out. But um, Allison flew out to meet me when I was done rap, when I wrote rap. We took this amazing road trip through the Southwest, which uh, I think was my favorite part of Love the Irish. In addition to getting to work with Henry Gibson. The great, great, great Henry Gibson, who was an old school classic comedian from the Laugh In Days. Yes. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Hello, my name is Jessica. Are you crying? I'm trying not to. Uh, <laughs> over there, waving, in the corner. 
You just want to pull it The accent! <laughs> Hello, Daniel here. Uh, also, first timer. My question is between the satisfaction of being a good guy or the thrill of being a bad guy, what do you prefer? Well, it's always the bad guys, which is bad guys never think they're bad guys. Mm -hmm. Villains never think they're the villain because everyone's playing their own in their own world. So, I mean, you can't play, but you can't start out going, this guy's evil. You've got to figure out what, why he's making the actions he's doing. And, just, and so Kane was just such a delicious role. It was, if anything, I did. Be careful about not relishing it too much and being too mustache twirly. <laughs> if you've got a mustache like this, I <laughs> don't So, um, yeah, I would always take, always take the bad guys so we're really young. Over the good guys, I mean. <laughs> always villains have fun. And welcome to the So, how, how's this Friday SFO crowd treating you? Like the young lady here, I'm not sure I'm getting to stand up now. <laughs> <laughs> but, um, you guys have been just wonderful, and thank you again for coming out. I know it's been a long time waiting. Woo! But I hope this was fun for you, and I'll be a great weekend. Woo! 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 They could have sent in Baker to name exploding diarrhea. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please, if you would join me, give it up for the one you only Thank you for this love and support now and all the way down the road. Woo!